Practice number five is in the books for the Auburn Tigers. Robbie Ashford got reps with the ones, and the offensive line looks a lot like what we thought it would over the course of the summer. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. And for some of you, this may be your second listen because this will be our second show of the day. Lance Daw of AuburnDaily.com joining me to quickly recap Auburn's fifth practice of fall camp so far. Once again, just a 20-minute viewing window. What does it all mean? Well, last time we spoke, Lance, uh, TJ Finley was exclusively with the ones, and now we got what a lot of Auburn fans wanted to see, Robbie Ashford running with the ones. Yeah, and it was something that's funny. We were complaining about, or at least I was on yesterday's show. I'm like, man, they haven't really rotated a ton, and then I walk in, and there's Robbie with Tank, and I'm just like, oh. Okay, well, they, they finally did it. Yeah, we got to see Robbie Ashford work with the ones with what we can only assume to be the uh, starting offensive line. It looks like everything was just kind of set in place. I liked what I saw from a consistency standpoint. So I came on yesterday and I was talking about how, hey, man, none of these quarterbacks look consistent. And it's kind of like a shocker. It's kind of like, oh, well, you know, as camp goes on, guys will get better and things will become more consistent. And we got to see over a 24-hour period. It's like, okay, there are still definitely some flaws. All three right. of these guys have issues. But you're starting to see things kind of take shape. And I really liked what I saw essentially compared to uh, yesterday's practice. Yeah, well, that, that's good. And, and it seems to be a normal, uh, a normal opinion across the Auburn beat. So that first-team offense that we saw in pace drills or that you guys saw in pace drills today – was Robbie Ashford at quarterback, Tank Bixby at running back. The three wide receivers were Shedrick Jackson, Malcolm Johnson Jr., Tarvarish Dawson, and then at tight end was Luke Deal. Left tackle, Killian Zaire, that's been consistent all camp. Left guard, Brandon Council. Center, Nick Brahms, of course. Right guard, Cam Stutz. And right tackle, Austin Troxel. So that offensive line is sounding closer than what we thought it would be, just for uh, the sake of it. Zach Calzada led off the, the second team offense with Jarquez Hunter. His receivers were Coy Moore, Camden Brown, Javarius Johnson. And tight end was Brandon Frazier, which is a little fun to see. And then at left tackle, Brendan Coffey, left guard, Jaleel Irvin, center, Avery Jernigan, at right guard, Alec Jackson, and at right tackle, Colby Smith. Anything stand out specifically to you about guys that got nods in those specific positions? Yeah, you mean you, you look at tight end and that second team, Brandon Frazier, looking a little smoother. Uh, than what he has been during his time uh, with the Tigers. Saw him during some other drills, catch some passes for a guy that's sitting at six seven and has just kind of been buried on this depth chart for a while. You know, it's he he looks fluid, he looks smooth. I'm curious to see if he's maybe able to not necessarily take position. Uh, in the tight end room at that second spot, because like we talked about on yesterday's show, there's a lot of different guys in that room that will probably be getting reps, but he's a guy that could be just another, another player in this receiving rotation that could be getting touches. So that's what you look at with the, uh, the second team offense. And I'll also say this, we talked about him on yesterday's show. I just want to talk about him again, real quick. Camden Brown, Natural wide receiver. Natural wide receiver. He caught a touchdown pass in the corner of the end zone from Zach Calzada. Really, really nice throw. Really nice catch. If he can just get his footwork down, he get a little bit more consistency in his route running, that kid could be special. Mm -hmm. Just seeing him in practice, I'm just so impressed with him. He's a big boy, and uh, he's going to moss some folks, I think. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, there's just so much energy around his performance at fall camp so far. So, that is fantastic to see. Okay, so... I'm getting these notes from Justin Ferguson, friend of the show, auburnobserver.com. Sign up. He's got a special deal going on right now. But for individual work, the quarterbacks worked with running backs and wide receivers, and they were pretty much grouped into four different sets, and the quarterbacks would work with all four of them. And so I think the way these are grouped, I do think this matters, especially since we're starting to see – more of the names go in and out. I think Lance's internet just went out as well. So, um, but the grouping 
for the ones, you would assume, is Tank Bigsby, Shedrick Jackson, Malcolm Johnson Jr., and Tarvarish Dawson Jr., which is the same group that we saw with the ones just a second ago. Second was Jarquez Hunter, Camden Brown, Coy Moore, Javaris Johnson, and Tyler Fromm. The third group was Sean Jackson, Zevion Capers, DeZalen Warsham, Jay Fair, and Luke Deal. And then the last group was Damari Austin, J.J. Evans, walk-on Jake Cruz, Landon King, and Brandon Frazier. So we're consistently seeing Shed Jackson, Malcolm Johnson Jr., and Tavares Dawson with the starting group consistently. And we're starting to see Camden Brown, Coy Moore, Javaris Johnson consistently with the second group. And I think there's been times where we've seen Devion Capers with the second group as well. So all things to take note on. And also, I think just the order of the running backs is interesting, right? With Tank, Jarquez, and then I think we all kind of thought Damari Austin would be the third name. Right now, it's consistently Sean Jackson, then Damari Austin. Can that change by the time the season starts? Sure, absolutely. Lance, I'm bringing you back in. Nope, I'm not. It dropped out again. But then, But the whole, like, the whole element, I just did a hit on um, the Max Roundtable up in Montgomery, and we talked about this. But the role that that uh, Sean Jackson can play is you want your stable of running backs to all be able to do different things. And I think Damari Austin is similar to Jarquez Hunter in a few different ways. Their breakaway speed, their power, their ability to kind of slowly move the play outside if they need to. That is a different role, I think, than what Sean Jackson can offer you as the third back. Similarly to last year, what happened over the course of the season was that third back was Sean Shivers, which was a different style of back from Jarquez Hunter and Tank Bigsby. So I think it makes sense. Damari Austin may be the third best running back on the roster, but he may not be the third back on the roster from a depth chart and rotation standpoint because their roles are just different. All right, I want to go over some punt return stuff, which a few of you have asked. And um, we'll use Justin Ferguson's notes for this in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is the easiest and quickest way to bet on all of your sports action all season long. Highly encourage you to check out all of their news and notes that they're constantly updating throughout their website at betonline.net, as well as a ton of odds and lines from all over the sports world, including Major League Baseball each and every night that's happening right now. And of course, futures all over the place. So check it all out. Just search Bet Online. It's where the game starts. All right, some punt return notes here. Uh, Javaris Johnson, Coy Moore, Tarvaris Dawson Jr., Jay Fair, Tank Bigsby, Donovan Kaufman, and Keontae Scott were all guys that were catching punts out of a machine. And I think it's a little interesting. My favorite of those group is probably Javarius Johnson. We'll see what really happens there. Um, Coy Moore would be fun. Tarvarish Dawson would be fun. I just can't see them putting a true freshman back there with Jay Fair. I can't see them putting Tank Bigsby back there just because he's too important. Donovan Kaufman, maybe if you want the sure handedness of making the right decision, I think he's probably the most reliable. And then Keontae Scott, once again, I just have a hard time seeing you put a true freshman back there catching punts. It's just too important of a role. And doing the smart thing is more important than a potential breakaway touchdown there. So everything else from all the reports that I'm reading of practice, we're all about just kind of basic folks taking care of business, you know, um, offensive line working on technique and one-on-one -on -one situations and that kind of being the gist of it. More of the same um, with the biggest takeaway is the quarterback rotation is looking a little bit different. So a lot of fun there. A lot of fun there. We dropped this extra episode on Wednesday because tomorrow we're doing Cruton Thursday with John Garcia. And so we didn't want to really disrupt the flow of all of that. Later today, Lance will have his notes up at auburndaily.com. And of course, you can read all of my written work at auburndaily.com as well. Quick, short, abbreviated show. Just wanted to get this up 
to you guys because I didn't really have a place to put it tomorrow. I'm like, let's just get it to them as quick as we possibly can. So tomorrow on Thursday show, it's a crew Thursday with John Garcia of Sports Illustrated. All the Auburn recruits that you need to know. All right here on Locked on Auburn.